We seem to have kind of a theme going on on the show today, kind of getting your kids and you ready to head back to school. That's going to include their smiles this morning. Dr. David Bartow is here. He has Bartow Pediatric Dentistry. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. I, I have a daughter, a teenage daughter, and she has said to me multiple times, Mom, you don't understand. More than ever before, your teeth and your smile are so important. Everybody, all the kids want that gleaming white smile. Mm -hmm. It starts, I guess, with brushing your teeth. Yeah, yes, ma'am, it does. And uh, just getting into a good, consistent habit, getting those habits started earlier, and just really, really just trying to prevent cavities is, is a step one. I asked you something off camera, and I was honestly just a question to throw your way. I mm -hmm. was not expecting the answer I got. And that is that since COVID started, uh, as a dentist, you have really seen an uptick mm -hmm. in cavities. Y yes, ma'am. It's, uh, um, and you don't want to blame it on any one thing necessarily, but just seeing that uptick and, and, and what could be causing that. And with all the kids being home, um, a lot of times your your central location at home is going to be in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And oh, sure. um, maybe that, that did, maybe that didn't, but you've definitely seen a rise in, in, in cavities. And it could just be grazing throughout the day, getting on your Zoom calls, making sure you, you get to the right class on Zoom. And, uh, you know, mom and dad trying to help and everybody's just in there and, and, and you see just a little bit, uh, a little bit of an uptick in, in well, and, that. and you're not walking out the door to school necessarily, no. so you don't have to brush your teeth. Yes, ma'am. And I guess that's what's happened. Yeah. Are some people just more inclined, David, to get cavities than others? Is it always a result of poor dental hygiene? It is not. And it definitely, uh, there's a genetic component. Uh, there's a family history. Um, and it's it's an interesting statistic that, that plays in, in many aspects of life. It's uh, the 2080 rule. but you've got about 20% of your patient population that has 80% of the, of the cavities, roughly. And that's those are the kids that maybe have weaker enamel, mm -hmm. um, and that are just more prone to getting cavities. And those are the kids that really gotta, gotta fight it and, and brush twice a day and floss and, and watch what they're putting in their mouth. And there definitely is a genetic component. To the part about brushing twice a day, and we'll mm -hmm. cover lots of information, I hope, for you this morning, but you also told me something I would have never thought, that that is, it's the mechanics of the toothbrush mm -hmm. that are really the critical component. So if all you have is water, yes, have at it anyway. Right. I, I um, Kids are awesome. So uh, <laughs> you ask them, you know, how, how much they brush or how much they floss. And usually it's because mom didn't get them the toothpaste or mom didn't get them the floss. Right. But with, with actually brushing, well, I'll just say, well, hey, you know, Johnny, if you don't have any toothpaste, brush your teeth anyways. Mechanically getting that plaque off your teeth consistently is more important than anything else. Now, there's obvious benefits to toothpaste, and we recommend toothpaste, but uh, at the same time, it's more important to focus on getting the plaque off the teeth, making sure they're getting that brush all the way up to the gum line and, and make sure they do a good job. Okay, true or false, if you're going to buy a new toothbrush, mm -hmm. uh, should you choose a soft bristle or a medium bristle? Uh, for, for kids, we, we like soft. Okay. And uh, you know, as you age, and depending on your individual needs, you, you may want to go to a, to a harder brush. Um, but for kids, usually it's soft. Yeah. Twice a year is still the recommended uh, cleanings for children and for all of us, I guess, really? Well, it's, uh, it's, that's a good question. Uh, for, for children, you want to see them every six months because they're growing and developing. And you're trying to monitor, are things going the way they're supposed to? Do we need to step in and maybe modify, do something? Uh, as you age, depending on how often you get cavities, are you high risk, meaning do you get a lot of cavities, or are you low risk, uh, meaning you've never had a cavity in your life. So that goes with x-rays as well. Um, so for kids, every six months is, is appropriate, but as, as they get older into adulthood, sometimes they're recommending once a year, Okay. sometimes they're recommending you know, a year and a half, and it just kind of depends on your history. Okay, something that I learned, I was well into my probably 30s when I learned this, so shame on me, I did not realize as a dentist, you are literally peering in to the insides of us. You can see mm -hmm. potential health problems, too, when you're doing your teeth cleanings. Yes, ma'am. You're, you're looking for um, anything that, that can give you an idea into their, into their health. Now, now granted, we're, we're, we are located in the mouth, but right. you're looking at their airway. You know, how does that affect their breathing? Um, do they have really large tonsils? Things, things of that nature. And, of course, if you see certain things like that, um, you're going to recommend that they, they see their pediatrician. So it's just another kind of line of defense, mm -hmm. if you will. And Neither one of us is about mm -hmm. to step into a political circle. Okay. So we're not going to go there. Yes, ma'am. But there is a lot of conversation right now about mm -hmm. what's, what the new school year is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Are the kids going to be going back wearing masks? Is it going to be mandatory or optional? Right. For the ones who should end up, and maybe they get to choose, wearing a mask, mm -hmm. does that bring a different type of protocol to taking care of your teeth does having a covering over your face all day affect anything with your mouth uh 
quite honestly, I don't think it affects necessarily the the environment in your mouth by having that mask on there necessarily. I mean, you know, feeling like it's hard to breathe and things like that. I've experienced sure. that myself, but I wear a mask all day, every day, so I'm probably more used to that. Yeah. Even before COVID, we wear masks all day, every day. Um, but I think more than anything, when you're wearing a mask, no one's seeing your mouth. Mm -hmm. And if no one's seeing your mouth, you're not thinking about your mouth. Right. And if you're not thinking about your mouth, maybe you're not brushing. Maybe right. you're not cleaning like you should. Right. Um, that's more of what, what, what I've seen probably in that regard. Listen, I made the 10 a.m. grocery store run on a Saturday wearing a mask mm -hmm. with my teeth not brushed. So there you go. I'll confess uh, yep. my sin as well. Okay, when, uh, how old should you be when you have your first dental cleaning? Is there a recommendation? There, there is a recommendation. It's uh, eruption of the first tooth or by age one. And it's, uh, um, it's kind of changed over the years. Mm -hmm. um, Growing up, my dad was a pediatric dentist, and uh, um, he would usually just tell parents, you know, come on in around three, you know, unless you see something, because uh, typically that's when you start to to clean and, and do things of that nature. But it's changed over the years, and the earlier you can see them, the more you can talk to that parent. Okay, these are the, kind of what's recommended, and if they're, if they're a first time parent, you know, there's some information sure. they probably don't know sure. as far as you know when to stop a passy, um, how to clean, uh, things like that. So it's more of just a consultation with with a parent, say, hey. You know, do you have any questions? This is what we expect to happen over the next, you know, few years, and it's just a good, it's a good time to meet someone to, to give them information that they that they need as far as how to take care of their child's teeth. If you're a mom of more than one child, you know for sure what this back to school time is going to look like, and you're mm -hmm. trying to have all hands on deck. You kind of rely on your older kids, especially, to take care of some things they should yes, know to do. The length of time you brush your teeth yeah. is important. Yes, so aren't there electric toothbrushes out there that kind of like sing a mm. song to you? Yes. Do you think those are good? I think they're great if it works. If it works. If it works. Every kid is different and you, um, every every child is an individual. And what works for one may not work for the other. So in general, um, you would assume that an electric toothbrush or that type of toothbrush has more friction to it and is going to do a better job of removing that plaque. That's great. If they, if they love it, encourage it. If a mechanical toothbrush works better for them, that's okay. It's just find out what works best for that kid. But um, I've, in my life, I've had you know one of those Sonicare's, yeah. and, and then I, and then I haven't. And personally, I uh, haven't noticed a, a ton of difference. But um, but they're both good. It's just figuring out what works best. What about flossing? And if you are, yes. are going to stress the importance of it, is the old handheld do-it-yourself floss yep. versus the little sticks that you can get? Uh -huh. Does it make a difference? Um, it does uh, a little bit, and. The, the water flossers are, are okay, um, but ideally you want string between those teeth because what that's doing is it's mechanically, physically removing the plaque between the teeth where the brush can't get. Okay. So you, um, the little, uh, I forget what they're called. You know what I'm talking the about. Picks. They have like the multicolored mm -hmm. and, and ones. They have the, yeah. Yeah. Those, those are fantastic too okay. because it can get the kids their ability to do it with if their they dexterity. Can hold it. Yeah. Exactly. We encourage kids to, to brush their teeth, we encourage kids to floss. But we also encourage the parents to always double check and make sure that they're doing a good job. Okay. So you, you want to create that independence, but at the same time, have a backup. And since a lot of the kids you see have not yet gotten braces, their mm -hmm. teeth are coming in in their natural state, you can sometimes have them, you know, too close together or yes, something. What do you do yes, when that floss gets caught in there and mm -hmm. it drives you crazy? What do you do? So um, the, without braces, um, if, if you get any floss anytime you get it caught, that's what the string floss is really good. And my preference, obviously, is string floss, the one you wrap around your fingers, because you, if you get caught, you just slide it out. If you have one of those floss picks, you can't do that. So it's, um, there's mainly advantages on all of it, and, and rarely do they get caught too much unless um, maybe they've got some, some restorations that are, you know, yeah. they're, they're losing teeth, things are getting a little squirrely in there, and okay. uh, that, that can happen. He promised me that he liked to talk. Yes. He, he was yes. a man of his word this morning. So if you are looking for a pediatric dentist uh, and you want to have somebody who will talk to you, educate you, so that you can leave your kids alone and go take care of you in the morning, knowing they're going to brush those teeth well, he'd be happy to see you. It's Bartow Pediatric Dentistry, their phone number and website there on your screen. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Recent injury keeping you from getting out? Mobility at Home sells and rents wheelchair ramps so you can get your